Meet the Pet Safe Guardian, a GPS connected, customizable, invisible fence. I have the best deal on it down in the description. And so it's switched over to correction now. The Pet Safe Guardian needs no subscription. Think of this as a truly bare bones cousin of high end GPS fences like Spot On and Halo. Let's unbox and see if it's right for you and your pup. Here we have the base station, antenna and all. Not winning any beauty contests, but all right. Next up, a wall charger for your batteries. Ah, and a power adapter. This one's for the base station. The USB plugs into the block, and the other end slots right here into the base. Over here, we have the wall mounts for the base, and a single pair of static correction prongs. I'd guess the collar's already equipped with a pair, but we'll confirm that in a second. Now, a solo battery, rechargeable and removable, mind you. Slide it in, twist, and lock it into place. Let's not forget the paperwork. Warranty, quick start, and training guides. Time for the main event, the collar. Here's the PetSafe Guardian GPS dog collar. More on the budget, functional side than chic. Battery slots right here. Good to know the charger can handle an extra one if you decide to get it. This collar has length. Super adjustable from Chihuahua to a massive St. Bernard. Simple, no frills, that's its charm. But I don't know how comfy it'll be to wear. I'll put it on to test the durability in another video. Stay tuned for that. There's no clear leash loop, but it does indeed come with a pre-installed set of static correction prompts. Last but not least, this unmarked part right here seems to be the GPS antenna. So to sum it up, the box comes with the base, the collar, a battery, a battery charger, a power adapter for the base, extra prongs, and wall mounts for the base. So here's the rundown. We'll set it up, check out the app, draw and customize a fence, and then we'll do a quick boundary test to make sure that the fence is working. They claim an hour or two for setup, but I breeze through it in about 15 minutes or so. Mounting the base to the wall might stretch that time though, depending on your DIY skills. Grab your quick start guide, scan the QR, and install the app. Not the highest rating, but we'll reserve judgment. Register with an email, go in and add your product. Choose Guardian GPS Fence. First order of business, get that battery charging. In the meantime, the on-screen guide will walk you through the rest. The base unit is essentially mission control. All your fence settings live there, so keep it powered and Wi-Fi connected. You get some pointers on where to place this work of art. Out in the open, no hiding allowed. Drop the base where you plan to install it and enable location services. It locates quickly. Plug it in, turn on Bluetooth, and just like that, your fence is recognized. Connect to Wi-Fi, and once it says the fence is active, give it a name. It says, go creative, go wild. So of course, I'm naming it Zach's Fence. Now, let's draw that fence. It's an app only feature. No boundary walks like you get with Spot On or Halo. Keep it at least 25 feet from risky zones or structures. We sketch it out on the app, which then syncs with the base. After that, it's pushed to the collar. You're locked into using at least four posts and you can edit by going to settings, edit fence. Not exactly a user friendly path, but from there you can extend or redraw as needed. Slide in that charged battery into the collar, tighten it with a coin, and you'll see a green light. Keep the collar near the base and hit next. There's a little chime and voila, it's connected. Add your dog's info, a cute pick, name, breed, all that jazz, and assign the collar. It'll take a moment to save the fence settings and they give you some steps for a fence test. We'll get to that in a second. P.S. They say it'll take a few weeks for you to train your dog with the guide. Before we venture outdoors for the big test, let's cruise through the app. It has some low app store ratings, but honestly, it's user friendly mostly because it's kind of minimalist. You can tweak pet profiles, edit your fence, and adjust collar settings. Notice that the static correction starts off disabled. That's a plus in my book. Battery life and notifications? Yep, you can track those here too. But it's pretty basic stuff with no bells or whistles. Here's the deal, one fence at a time. Need a new layout? Edit the existing one. And for training guidelines, you're stuck with good old paper. Sure, you can navigate to the help section, which throws you into the depths of their website. But honestly, you'll end up scrolling forever just to locate a digital guide. Stick with the paper version. It's less of a hassle. Okay, so I have the PetSafe Guardian mic'd up here and we're gonna do some boundary testing with it. I'll approach the boundary and we'll see if we get that distinct warning tone, which is a short beeping prior to getting the full correction tone, which is a solid beeping. And you know, by default, the static correction is turned off, but if that static correction were to be turned on, that would also be issued with the, um, the solid tone. So let's see what happens as we approach the boundary here. So that's the warning. And if I just turn around, it actually went to correction for just a brief second there, but perhaps I lingered a little too long. Let's see if we can replicate that and turn around before getting corrected. All right. And we're safe. Wonderful. Now let's see what happens if we linger at the warning. Now, if you do linger, it's, it does switch over to correction. So let's see if that happens here. And so it's switched over to correction now. 
So let's enter back into the safe zone. And I will note that it does seem to be sort of issuing the warning in pretty much the exact same spot. I'm not even shaking the collar like some others do require. Let's see what happens if we continue past the boundary, if it shuts off. So there's the warning. I'll continue forward. There's the correction. All right, let's continue on here for a bit. So it turns off as a safety feature so that your dog, you know, only gets corrected for so long. So let's make our way back to the safe zone. So we should be back in the safe zone now. So now what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna call it a sprint, but run as fast as I can towards the boundary and see how accurately it gives us that distinct warning and, and followed by, you know, correction. See if I can basically stop before correcting me. So it looks like it, did actually do a pretty good job when now it's correcting and now it's nothing. When I tried to stop, it did correct for maybe a half a second or a second. Um, and then as I came back into the, the safe zone, it, it did, you know, switch, get, it did again issue that correction. So, you know, not flawless, but not terrible. Okay, I guess there's nothing left to do but for me to try this on. So here goes nothing. Okay, so I'll take one for the team and wear this collar for a full on boundary test to check how those static corrections feel in my neck. So stay tuned for the full review and subscribe so you don't miss it. Compared to Spot on our Halo, this collar seems less comfy, but hey, it's a one-time spend of about $600 without any subscription. Let me see if it has some backbone. I'll tie myself to a tree for a pull test and heck, maybe I'll even shower with it to see if it's legit waterproof. Got other tests in mind? Drop them in the comments. And while you're down there, snag the best deal on the PetSafe Guardian from the link in my description. I'll be back in a flash with a full review. Until then, keep those tails wagging.